Welcome back everybody. Uh, for this week's video, I actually wanted to focus on the map display that's in Cosworth's Pi Toolbox. Uh, I'm also going to compare this a little bit with the, the map display that's in GM's Toolbox because um, you'll see they do different things and you can actually, both of them are useful in their own uh, places. So let's go ahead by reviewing how you create a map. I covered this in the first Getting Started video, but all you got to do is right click on one of your laps here in the uh, lap display and create map. And I always do a standard map. Um, the GPS map is technically going to be a little more accurate, but um, I've had issues with the segment times or the segment beacons not showing up properly if you're using a GPS map. So I'll just use a standard map. And we're going to go ahead and give it a name. In this case, it's VIR full. And as long as you've got a, a decent uh, distance channel, um, again, I showed you how to do this from the speed channel early on and assuming your speed's correct or reasonably correct, you'll get a pretty decent representation of the, your line through the track. Now remember, this is going to be your line through the track. This isn't necessarily track limits. So places like, you know, here the climbing S's where we, we try to straighten that out as much as possible, it looks a lot less like a corner and more like a straight. And the software is going to go ahead and try to calculate the corners for you. So here this threshold basically says, anytime I'm doing more than 0.5 Gs, let's go ahead and uh, interpret that as a corner. And then if for some reason your lateral G sensor is off a little bit, I really haven't had this problem with the Corvettes, but you can actually put an offset in there um, and, and um, basically have it basically center on that. You might check to make sure your official length is Close to correct. Um, I don't remember what VIR's official length is, but I know it's 17,000 and something feet, so that looks just about right. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And at this point now, the map's been generated. Um, I've already, in my workbook, I have a worksheet where I've inserted a map display. We did this again in the first video. And this is the map that got created just now. So you'll see the software has gone ahead and tried to interpret the corners as best it could. Um, again, this isn't exactly correct uh, for the, the official layout for VIR full. So you probably want to tweak this um, to make it more aligned with kind of how you, you know, how you refer to the corners yourselves. So, you know, if you right click on the map, you can do edit map. And then you can do things like say this right here that it's labeling as turn one. Well, that's that's the kink uh, in the front straight. It's actually a reasonably high G load uh, corner, so it's interpreting it as a corner. But we don't want it to be a corner. We don't want it to be turn one. So we can just go ahead and change the segment type to straight. And then this little, little line in between, if I right click on that, I can say merge segments. So it's going to go ahead and make that one big section. Uh, here, let's go ahead and um, put a, let's see, maybe put a uh, break in right here, just so we've got kind of one, two. Split segments what I want. And again, we'll probably want to tweak these a little bit. We can move this forward. So you get the idea. I'm not going to go through the entire map and do this. Uh, really important though, as you're doing these changes to the map or when you're done, don't just hit escape, uh, right click, edit, done or hit control enter that will actually save the changes if you just hit escape um, and exit edit mode it'll re it'll basically reset back to where it was so i'm going to go ahead and do something here um, and actually load a map that i've already gone through and that i've been using which has all the corners set up that basically match vir's actual lat, uh, track layout so we'll do map load and i'll do that was the one i backed up just before and so here we go. This is uh, VIR. So now that's nice. It's a map. What do you do with it? Well, you can see where the car is at any given time. So this should all, as long as you have your uh, display synced, this should be the same place as I flip between inputs and I pick up a spot on the track here and I go back to the map display. I'm going to be in the same place so I can as I'm looking at my data, I try to say, okay, where was that on the track? Where am I physically? It's a good way to bounce back and forth and see that. But where it really gets useful is when you start adding some data to it. So I'm going to click on my map display again, just so I know it's the, the active window, Alt-2. And we're going to add some data. 
So the first thing I might want to add is, let's just say break. So you'll see by default, what it's doing is it's creating these bands that represent uh, break activity. And you see there's multiple rings. Uh, the way I like to think about this is it's like rings of a tree. So if you look at your lap list here uh, under tasks, and then you look at your map, the top one is going to be the innermost ring to the track. The next one is going to be the next one out from the track. So if you had like three or four laps here, just think of them as rings building up as you go down the list of laps. So here you can see some interesting things. Like in my slower lap, I was breaking a good bit earlier. Um, it's still kind of crazy to realize just how early I'm breaking for turn one, but it's a, it's a very high speed section. You can also see that uh, I carry the brakes a lot harder, a lot longer um, in the slower lap. And then same thing, uh, setting up for turn three, I'm breaking earlier um, and harder. So you kind of go around the track again, you know, the, the run between nine and 10, again, more braking in the slower lap. Um, there's a little bit of a theme here to all this where in general, I was just breaking a little bit earlier or a little bit longer, whereas on the faster lap, I was breaking less. So if we go back to our data, um, you can actually add multiple data elements, but you can only see one band at a time. So for instance, if I added accelerator, I still just see the brakes, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take the break out. So it's just the first one element is the one that's gonna show. So here we're seeing accelerator position. And so you can see where I'm on the gas throughout the lap. And let's say that I actually just wanna see where I'm full throttle. Uh, one of the little things we can do is I can go ahead and uh, tailor the accelerator channel. So if I, I can go to Alt-3, find my accelerator channel, go down here, and instead of auto-scaling it, basically say no, and I can say I want to do minimum of, let's say, 90%. So now what you're seeing on the chart is really this is where I'm full throttle on the track. So this is useful to understand, you know, how soon am I getting back to the gas? How long am I staying at full throttle? Um, and again, having that nice graphical representation all the way around the track. Um, you can also see some interesting things like uh, on the back straight. Uh, this is comparing a lap on the inside where I start out in second gear as opposed to where I was in third gear. And so these little gaps you can see are where I'm shifting. And so you can actually see, you know, shift point to shift point, I'm shifting up quicker in the lap where I came out of in second gear than I am in when I came out in third gear. So this is my... My 2-3 shift, which doesn't happen, 3-4, four, 4-5, four, and you can see like I'm getting into fifth gear much earlier in that lap, and that's probably where a big part of my speed came from. The other thing you can see um, is this big gap right here. This is my super slow fourth to fifth upshift on the front straight because I've just messed that thing up more times than I can count. So it's, it's something I try to be very deliberate with, but as a result, I'm off the gas for a fairly big chunk of time in making that upshift. So let's add some more data and see, okay, how can we answer questions like, um, what was my minimum speed through a corner? What was my maximum speed on the straight? So again, go back Alt-2, let's bring up the selector. And I am gonna add another data element. So I'm gonna leave the accelerator here, but I'm gonna add the speed channel. Now you'll see by default, there's nothing that shows up on the map. So we need to actually do something different here. So right click, properties, and here you can tailor a bunch of things like not show lab not show band labels and that sort of thing. But um, under labels, we can add channel data here and we'll see where that pops up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, and it's gotta be added over here first, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the speed channel. And I'm gonna add speed max. And then I'm gonna add the speed channel again. And I'm gonna do speed min. And I'm gonna apply. And you'll see what it's done is it's actually created a report around the map where it has those two channels. And you have a legend over here. So the number one is max speed, number two is min speed. And you can see for my two laps now, what was my max and min speed as we go around the track. So, you know, turn one, you can see my, my min speed uh, on my slower lap is, you know, mile and a half slower. Max speeds are about the same. Um, and you can kind of trace that around and say, okay, you know, where am I carrying more speed? Where am I 
um, over slowing the car lap to lap. And it's a good way to compare multiple data sets actually on the map itself. Now, you know, you compare this map to something like Ames Race Studio or even GM's uh, Cosworth Toolbox, and it's missing some pretty basic things. Like, I don't have an ability to look at the line. Uh, I don't have an ability to zoom in. Um, so if you want to do those types of activities, um, actually you should look at the, the GM Cosworth Toolbox. So same data set. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and open it up over here. And this is the one you see on GM's page for like the Corvette Toolbox or the, the Cadillac uh, ATS -V, tool, v Series Toolbox or the Camaro Toolbox. It's all basically the same program. And here it's got an option to plot your GPS data over top of uh, Bing Maps. And now you can see uh, what's frankly one of the nicest views I've seen of being able to compare lines. So I can scroll in with the mouse and I can see the orange line is my fast lap. The blue line is my, my slower lap. And you can see things like, well, I, I stayed further left and I waited a little bit longer to turn in on my faster lap. I also hugged the inside a little longer. And then, you know, again, took a slightly wider arc to set up for turn three. So you can go through and see like what were those differences in the line that I made throughout the lap. Um, and it's a really nice tool for being able to do that level of uh, analysis that you just can't do um, with the regular Cosworth tool, Pi toolbox. The other thing uh, about the GM toolbox, it does go ahead and, you know, just like Pi toolbox, it auto generates the corners and the straights. And they, again, they hardly ever match up with the actual track. So um, you can't really put too much stock in these labels, but it does give you, if you understand where they are on the track, the ability to look at like max speed, uh, min speed for a corner, lateral G's, time on accelerator. So it's got a couple of nice features there. Frankly, I just wish that they'd integrate this map display into the, the Pi toolbox and then I'd, I'd never have to leave it again. So uh, the last thing I'd say is if you want to go ahead and edit the map, you can edit the report as opposed to the map itself. And that gives you the ability to do things like drag around where the boxes are on the map. You can also go in and delete the labels. So maybe you don't want to see a label for, I don't know, your speed from three to four. You can go ahead and delete that. And so you can also, it, it just, it gives you a little, a lot of flexibility in how you tailor this display. Um, but more than anything, it's just useful for that graphical overlay um, of seeing, you know, where the car is behaving physically on the map and being able to help orient yourself and the data around that. All right, I think that's it for today. It's going to be a probably a shorter video. Uh, appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. Again, if you have any ideas, please go ahead and um, post them in the comments. Thanks and have a great day.